Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what was happening yesterday in the Europa League and the Europa Conference League and I do repeat myself, it was again a very enjoyable evening and uh, for my team last, yes it was probably the last European game for a while, there's only a slim chance that they can qualify for Europe. But it was a positive end, although down to some dodgy ref refereeing, because let's face it, Slavia was just a step, if not two, above Lusk. Um, if you look at the background, the <laughs> Conference League is spilling over. I actually decided to only pull out teams uh, that have qualified. And I realized I only have five Europa League teams, hence the Ukraine shirt is a little bit more prominent here, um, and six from the Conference League. However, I have it. I am working on a sixth uh, team from the Europa League, so uh, there will be parity. I think I will have enough jerseys to have always a background. Uh, come, 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 and you know, uh, all fine uh, by me. But I would say we have uh, quite a few games. We had also three overtimes uh, to talk and to get through. So I think I want to actually start with the last game because it was such a, a, a fun game. First of all, um, finally Lusk played in a, uh, you know, we cannot play in, in our own stadium because it's being rebuilt. Uh, coming in a year or so, should be ready. Uh, second of all, the, um, uh, our replacement stadium is not fit for the league, so we had been playing in Klagenfurt, which is basically like, all the way across the Alps uh, for our drive in the fall, which was not good. Finally, we played closer to home with, uh, with just uh, like an hour drive from here in St. Perton. Which we couldn't in the fall because, uh, simply speaking, they uh, they made a new grass uh, surface, blah, 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 and so the additional stress on, on, on it couldn't work out, be it how it may. It was great because the stadium was not entirely full, but it was well over, f um, <laughs> no, the stadium holds 9,000, it was um, about 6,000 people there, and... It wasn't almost even because there were so many fans from Prague there that you had on the one side all the Lask fans. I would say about 60% Lask fans, 40% Slavia fans. And that made for a great atmosphere. So uh, it had kind of a final correct a character, character as well. Uh, after the 4 1 loss, it was pretty clear that Slavia will move on. But they always said, yeah, let's try, let's try. Well, uh, once Ola Jink in the 24th made it 1-0, uh, things were done, done, and done. Then uh, the slapstick goal of the evening came, Lask equalized in the 36th minute. A freaker from Michal goes onto the post, falls onto Wiesinger. And I don't know what's happening with this new grass because the, in front of goal it looked pretty bad there. And he is clear on goal and just uh, cannot get the shot off. <laughs> he tumbles. Uh, he falls over the ball. Then the ball falls behind him. I think Goige yanks it then and it goes via defender over Wiesinger up in, into the goal. And, and absolutely amazing goal. You thought, yay, only three goals left for overtime. And right in this euphoria, uh, Bohr, who has been a thorn in our side for the entire first leg. Again, second, he just... It seemed all safe and suddenly he uh, fires on the turbocharger and yips, zips past the last, the last defenders and then uh, pulls it to bar 2-1, 37. That was the game. We all knew that. However, there was a little bit of uh, a twist in the tail because Uzu um, got sent off for holding back Balic on a second yellow. That was a fair red card, I gotta say. And so, yeah, maybe that was the hope that maybe you can get a point for Austria out of that one. Um, but early in the second half, 60 seconds against Sor. I mean, watch that goal. The Lasky fans do not have a prey against him. He just has the ball, he puts it, and with his sheer speed, he runs clear front of goal, and it is 3-1. Okay, I said, please let's, let Lasso get another route. However... Uh, a few changes and then suddenly Wiesinger, who is becoming a goal getter in Europe. Remember, he scored already his wonder strike against Manchester United uh, in 2020 <laughs> when we, we were playing Manchester United. Yep. He just takes a shot from a long range and yes, it swerves uh, weirdly, but also also goalie. Through the goal is like 2-3. Uh, then again, more changes, more changes. Uh, and then I think the 
bad call of the evening. Plovzic, and again, uh, no uh, VAR in, in the Europe. Plovzic is sent off. Yes, he has a foul, but it's a yellow card. It's not a malicious foul in any way. He gets sent off in the 85th, 85th minute. And more or less from that free kick, Gruber scores uh, McMahon, makes it 3-3. Yay! That's a point that I didn't expect. And it gets even better because within two minutes, Schmidt makes it 4-3. Lask winning against Lars, Slavia Prague. At that point, I said, if they get that goal, it was at 87th, 89th, they could get a 91st and 93rd. That could work out and you go into overtime. There was enough time, time for that. But I, to be honest, as much as I would have wished for it, it would have not been deserved. Because uh, A, the red card for Slavia was a joke. And Slavia was so much better than Lask. So much better of the two legs, but I was very happy that last gets a win. So um, at least while all Austrian teams have now been eliminated, all of them uh, gained more points. Austria is still in the eighth spot, which is pretty amazing, I gotta say. And uh, the two weaker teams got wins. So I think uh, one can be thoroughly happy with the showings of Austrian teams. And I'm especially happy with last I mean, uh, just from the groups of John, six wins, one draw, one loss. And I knew that Slavia is just a step too far. But I, I'm actually quite content. Um, now let's focus on, 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 on the league and maybe via the uh, Conference League playoffs. Lask may actually get back into Europe next year. Uh, although I think it wouldn't hurt them for one uh, season to skip and then go back into Europe once the new stadium is there. So that was Conference League. We'll come back to to, to, to the Conference League. I want to run through the Europa League first. Um, a little bit of a letdown was Leverkusen against Atalanta. I mean, Atalanta for about 20, 20 minutes was really uh, dominant there. But after that, it was all Lever Leverkusen. Leverkusen would have deserved very well to take the lead. I think they hit the crossbar once. Um, had... Uh, a no, no, not the cross. They had two of one of ones with, with the goalie, but Musso saved with his leg twice pre pre uh, pre, 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 pre well. Um, and it was the only last minute goal by um, uh, Bo, uh, Boga, uh, who made it 1 0 uh, when Leverkusen was committing all forward. Um, one may say, I mean, on the day, I think Leverkusen would have deserved the win. To win this game. Uh, on balance, Atalanta probably should have won by more than just one goal. So maybe on balance, Atalanta going through is fine. However, the way it went, I mean, I will, I'm not complaining about an Italian win. Uh, be it from me. But uh, just taking no, no Lutra's perspective, I gotta say, um, was a little bit disappointed from Atalanta, who went a little bit too Italian uh, in uh, that tie. Um, Javenas Vesda against Rangers. I mean, 10th, uh, 10th minute. It was already 1 0 for uh, Javenas Vesda. I gotta say, I mean, they were in a tough spot. Uh, with a little bit of luck, they could have gotten something out of Glasgow. Um, you know, get at least a goal, which probably would have deserved because I thought the 3 0 was a little, little bit too, too much. With the 1 0, uh, you had the crowd behind them, but they couldn't really uh, keep it up. I mean, if you make a second before the half, maybe. But then Kent uh, in the 56 settles the game and then only very late, late on Jimenez Vesta gets through a penalty, uh, the winning goal. But the Rangers moving on to the quarters. Uh, pretty impressive. Uh, Barcelona also move on and I gotta say, fully deserve it. So, um, although I was for one when Marcao, uh, Marcao, I think it's Marcao, uh, made it 1 0 with a header. I thought, is Galatasaray really pulling that upset? With a coach, it actually was the assistant under Guardiola when he was at Barcelona. Because you could see how the coaching staff of both teams uh, were really friendly with Vidra. There's a strong Barcelona connection there. But I definitely got to say that um, when that goal went in, I thought, will I lose Barca now here? I gotta look for Galatasaray shirts. And basically, at the moment I look, look at it, Petri uh, scores probably the best goal of the, of the I just love what he did there. Uh, the pass from Ferran Torres, you see already, he has a clear um, path to goal to shoot, but especially when you look at it from the back of, of the goal, he's a little bit far out. What, 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 what does he do? He composes with it. One tackle of the Turk, uh, one Turkish uh, defender is coming in for a far tackle. He just keeps the ball, just hesitates. Uh, and then a second time, and then he's clear and he, he can take a shot. A brilliantly taken goal. 
Aubameyang then in stoppage time hits the upper side of the crossbar uh, and gets then the winning goal after a barrage of chance, uh, ch ch chances uh, there in the 4 for ninth, which more or less settled the tie. Uh, I was surprised that Barca could play in their properly jerseys because I know that UEFA doesn't like the iridescent crest, but you know. Uh, I think it was overall uh, Barcelona deserved to win that one. I don't deny that uh, it would have been fun to maybe see Galatasaray move on just because to have a little bit more variety, but I think Bar Bar Barcelona is the attraction in that uh, league, in that competition at the moment, and I'm very much looking forward uh, to seeing them play a little bit more. Okay, a uh, big surprise for me was that Braga ousted Monaco. Maybe if you see the up and down of Monaco, it was not that much of a surprise. And in the 20th minute, Ruiz made it already 1-0 for Braga, 3-0 on Agri. And Monaco was not going, going, going to come back very late on to get an equalizer. So uh, that was a, a surprise. And then uh, we already are at the uh, later games. Uh, Frankfurt against Betis. You know, and there is a theme there. All Seville teams have been eliminated. Uh with Seville being hosting the final. I gotta say, I mean, uh, it was a very open game, but it was nil-nil for the long time, but this was one of the uh, better, uh, of the nil-nils of the good kind, where there were chances left and right. Um, and in the first half, I think Frankfurt should have uh, settled the tie, uh, especially when Ansgar Knauf hit the crossbar, but there were other really good, good, good chances. But the more the game went on, the more Betis had chances. And just when you thought it will end in a nil-nil, Frankfurt is through, Betis actually score. Uh, it was a brilliant uh, run uh, on the uh, by Fekir on on the left, left side. Who defends Borja Iglesias, who heads it in from the near corner in the nine, 90th minute. One one. It goes to overtime, and that was a seesaw overtime. It could have gone either way. They all dart again, and I just when I thought there will be a penalty, penalty shootout. Nope. Uh, a free kick from Kostic. Goes towards where Hinteregger is, the goalie calms out, but in, in the end it's Rodriguez's own goal, because I think Hinteregger doesn't even touch it at all. And that's why the goal stood. Uh, also, the goalie came, came, came a little bit too, uh, too, too late. But uh, absolutely, it was a stoppage time of overtime winner for Eintracht Frankfurt, an equalizer, which turned out to be an overall winner. Um, I, I'm, I'm of two minds. I mean, on, on, on the one side, I really like uh, Frankfurt, but it would have been nice to see Betty move, move move on. But I honestly think the way that the season is developing, Frankfurt can do probably more damage. It's probably the over, over the better team over Betis. Um, and actually, already in the first tie, should probably have won it by a little bit bigger score. But this was a seesaw game. Everything you want from a European tie. I gotta say. Uh, Porto also dug in, but you know, found themselves very early on, 1-0 uh, down at Lyon, so 2-0 on aggregate. Pepe gets a 27th minute equalizer, so it's only one goal left to overtime. Unfortunately, Porto cannot do it. And again, we already said Braga moved on, Benfica moved on. The two big teams from Porto got all out. I mean, if you're a Portuguese soccer fan, you really wonder what is happening. But a really good, really, really, really good season for Port Portugal, one has to say as well. But so, France against Port Portugal in the Europa League uh, ends 1-1 with uh, Monaco and Braga, uh, Monaco losing to Braga and Lyon uh, um, beating Porto. I actually, if you would have asked me, I would have said it's the other way around. Uh, the big tie, of course, was West Ham and Sevilla, which was rather even the first half. I mean, Suchek uh, in the 39th minute gets the um, the first goal. But I gotta say, at that point, I really felt that this was a more even tie. But in the second half, you, you see that Sevilla looked tired. Uh, where Weston was much more physically present and probably should have decided it already in the in the regulation. Over time, you know, then uh, towards the end, everything pointed squarely towards all, 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 all time. I, mean, um, I think the last 50, 50 minutes, the vehicle could settle themselves. However, uh, it was not all to be. And then Yamolenko gets the win in the 112th minute uh, after Fonal's shot is parried. He just uh, put, put it in, in, into the net. Uh, and kind of a little bit of a feel good story, you know. Uh, we have a Ukraine back there that the Ukrainian scores that winning goal. Um, Pretty, uh, uh, pretty, 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 pretty sweet in that part. I gotta say, I mean, while it would have been nice to see Sevilla and Betis move on, I gotta say I'm not unhappy that West Ham move, move, moves on because that's a team that actually deserves a little bit more of a European 
run at this very moment. So yeah, uh, we're going to the Conference League. So uh, Europa League, before we uh, let, 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 let's quickly remember, remember that the draw is today, who he has now qual qualified. We have Rangers, Braga, Lyon, Atalanta, West Ham, Barcelona, Leipzig and Frankfurt. So we have two German teams, we have a French team, we have a Scottish team, we have a Portuguese team, we have an Italian team, English and Spanish. I mean, it's rather, rather even. So uh, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, as for the, fav the, the favorites, you would expect, of course, Barcelona are uh, almost 21% favorite ahead of Leipzig uh, and then West Ham and Atalanta, uh, Lyon, Frankfurt, Rangers and Braga uh, on the outside uh, of that bracket. But it, this is all pre-draw. I will, of course, do a video after the draw as well and then we'll see how it changes. It's an open draw, so we could very well have uh, Barcelona and West Ham meeting. So uh, I would actually suspect that it's not uh, not so clear, uh, clear, clear that, that we will have uh, one one tie that will uh, stand out above the others. Okay, let's move on to the Conference League. I already talked about Lusk, which is actually the last uh, game on my schedule. Um, Bode Glimt pulls the upset. And uh, for all the good uh, feel, the feel good story in it, I gotta say it all comes down to that awful penalty call in Norway. Where I said never should have given up the, uh, that, that should have never been a penalty. And that basically settled the tie. So um, the Dutch are having a, an awesome Europe, Euro, European season as well. But I gotta say, this just does not quite feel right. Um, the way that pair 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 event. I mean, Adze took the lead through twice through Pavlidis, uh, gave up a rather stupid goal through Pelle Pepe Pellegrino, and then an Icelandic defender who never ever scores in overtime uh, gets then the uh, winner, the virtual winner. Uh, for uh, Baldur Glimt. As I said, it is a feel good story for Norway. However, when I look at this one penalty call, it just does not feel right. I, th I think I'd say are really, really hard done by. Uh, hard done by is almost what you could say about Marseille as well, because they dominated the first leg, should not have won only by 2 1. They should have been a much, much higher scoreline. But there was always those little uh, stretches of play where Basel showed that they actually can be dangerous. That's why they made it 2 1. A game they probably should have ended 4 1, 5 1, in a way. Uh, and it was in many ways a similar story. Marseille dominating the game, even getting a penalty that uh, Lindner very nice uh, saves from uh, Harit, uh, Austrian team goalie. Um, and then the, um, uh, the rebound goes over the, the, the bar, but Marseille created the chances. Uh, out of nowhere, Andoye makes it 1-0 for Basel. And I thought again, is Basel really going to pull that upset? No, they're not. Uh, at that point, then Milik... Sampoli clearly he knows there's a big game coming up this weekend, so he wanted to save some energy. But he brings on then uh, Milik and she has some, and at that point then uh, Mama say turn turn it on, and it was a pretty nice um, assist by Jason to Under that make made it one one. Basically, took a wind out of the sails for Basel, and then very very late uh, late on uh, Rangier makes it two 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 to one after another nice Quintusi assist. So uh, lots of Marseille fans in Basel as well. So uh, that was that. Um, Copenhagen against uh, PSV. You expect another spectacle. Another spectacle was very one-sided. Uh, great crowd there. However, PSV took the life out of the crowd in no time with Sahavi in the 10th minute score. Then Götze uh, adding one. And it was just a PSV onslaught. Sahavi getting a second one. Then Madueke. Um, also, PSV is one of the best teams left standings. Uh, in probably the uh, marquee tie between Rennes and Leicester, Rennes gave it their all. Uh, Burigo got an early goal. Uh, um, uh, Rennes, of course, uh, pressing. But then Leicester, 2 through 4 4 9 the 51st, gets the equalizer. Uh, but Tate, 76 2 1. So it was only one goal away from overtime. It was never really quite there, but you know. Uh, Rennes at least fought uh, dark deep, they eliminated Spurs, they uh, failed with Leicester. But you know, um, Leicester is also one of those total teams that I'm not quite, I mean, depending on the draw, uh, we gotta see. Um, Roma, 
did the most Roma thing. I mean, the goal that Vitesse scored through Vitek was an absolute beauty to make it 1-0 uh, for Vitesse and to tie and to tie the uh, to tie the tie. Sounds weird. Uh, but then Tammy Abraham in the last minute, typically Roma fashion, scores uh, the equalizer and Roma move on, but with a whole lot more trouble than needed. Uh, no trouble for Feyenoord. Um, completely dom dominating part partisan who uh, does us. Well, it, it was a fun goal. Turnstra uh, takes a freak, free kick that uh, hits Dessas here on the head and uh, deflects it nicely into a goal. There should have been a goal before that that was called off. Again, Novar will come in the quarterfinal. Uh, Nelson May makes two, then Gomez pulls one, one, one back. You think that partisan maybe could get it or no. Uh, Dessas makes it in 3 3 1. Feyenoord is through with that one. And then the result that made me also probably the happiest overall uh, was that Pauk actually moved on over Kent. Uh, Crespo scoring uh, earlier 1 0, then uh, De Patra getting an equalizer in the 40th, really pushing, 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 pushing. Um, but Pauk gets the second goal, gets the win uh, through Augusto uh, and Hell. And we have a Greek team mo moving on, so pretty nice stuff there. So again, let's remind ourselves who is actually who made it into uh, the draw, which will happen then very, very later on. I'll, I'll do it uh, with, with, with again with this. We have Marseille, PSV, Leicester, Slavia, Pauk, Bode. So we have uh, two real outsiders in there, Roma and Feyenoord. Bode is not to be underestimated though. Um, I would say. And as for the chances of winning, we have uh, PSV is actually the, fav the favorite uh, with almost uh, 17 to percent Leicester just behind it and Roma also, also steps up below then Feyenoord, uh, OM, uh, Slavia, Bode and Pauk are the outsiders. So long video, but it was fun. It was really fun. I see you have a Champions League low look here, but you know. It's because Lask for once played in this jersey in Champions League qualification. As I said, uh, the season is over for Lask, but other than that, I was quite happy uh, with the evening. Uh, I think was very entertaining. And I do love those two comp 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 conditions because you get a little bit more variety and that's always fun. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!